Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Alhamdulillah. Uh, the, the previous video we explained to you how uh, from the understanding of now this new post materialist understanding of the, our existence I have explained to you how actually from the secular aspect of CBT we have developed the Pi CBT positive Islamic cognitive behavior therapy model and our model constitute of at a higher level of understanding based on the traditional metaphysics of Islam so it's not something new, it's not something that we created but it is based on the metaphysics that has been discussed by our alim, our ulama throughout the many centuries and they have explained in their various uh, manuscripts and books that you can refer to so we have, we have spoken about the understanding of the cult all right, and then from the rim of this uh, intuitive heart if we move downward, that means if we move from the absolute rim of Allah to the rim of the spiritual rim, the rim of the unconscious or the universal consciousness the, the rim of the cult and then from here on we are talking about the aspect of secular paradigm but for our paradigm we are a spiritual being living temporary in a physical world so how do we explain it from the perspective of our scholars okay we have explained to you in detail previously that our human self all our total past learning, learning history all that consists us at the spiritual, emotional, mental and physical level based on the inner speech, both positive and negative and we have this input from the internal sources and external sources so we have, for example, this is from our book if you go to our positive Islamic psychology model alright, you can have this whole range alright so we have the internal sources first, divine prophetic relation, uh, revelation this is Wahyu so Wahyu comes from where? it comes from Allah through the agency of Al-Angel Jibril so there is two aspects here from Allah to Jibril to us so there is an inter intermediary in terms of what existed beyond the physical world there is a spiritual world we call it angelic world alright we have divine inspiration inner speech we have ilham ordinary human being we have thoughts that's coming into our uh, feelings emotion and thoughts FET through ilham suddenly we have this idea this ilham for good normally ilham is all this uh, for in the hands of Allah is all things good so the good things that Allah gave us this ilham to do good and so on we have the believer in a speech eh? so we have for example our own inner speech we have spiritual vision okay within ourselves alright that is musha mushahada our inner speech is firasat we have this firasat here we have mushahada Firasat dan Mushahada Dan Mushahada here And then we have Contemplation, Tafakkur And we have within ourselves also The idea of Zikrullah, prayer and so on So these are the sources of influences of our thoughts But we also have these external thoughts uh, That is coming from ourselves And from outside the rim of ourselves That's why when we say about Both the positive and negative influences In terms of our total past learning history that is formed by if we assume the idea of thoughts before it become behavior in Islam any thoughts that is expressed come from either this agency or the other agency that means our own internal agency we have our sight, hearing, smelling, touch then we have excessive indulgence in the physical world alright so we have all those things which are, which are affecting us alright then we have greed, worldly material things, excessive appetite, ex excessive sexual desire evil prompting self, that means it's anafsu ammara and this anafsu ammara is then influenced by the influence again there's an external agency that's affecting us anafsu ammara that is the satanic or the evil because we say this evil suggestions is external All right? excessive worrying, psychological disorder, waswasa and so on so all this affects our existence in this world, that whether it is our behavior, our, our inner speech, and our thoughts. So, if we can understand this aspect, the sum total of influence that we live in this earth, both internal and external, affects us. So, if we assume a thought, if it is good, Alhamdulillah, if it is bad, it's just a thought. All right? So, we need not be, you know, for example, we have evil thoughts, thoughts of uh, committing murder, thoughts of committing 
Zina, thoughts of committing uh, evil things in the world. There are many, many things. These evil thoughts impinge on us, and there's a lot of this based on the input that we derive from the physical environment, the intra and inter-social environment, and from our inner speech. So if we are in the driver's seat, we can use our inner speech to influence from the negative to the positive. And this is the whole purpose of life. Because if we allow our evil thoughts to control us, then we slowly will pick up that, that, that evil idea. For example, if say a friend of us uh, prompt us to take, say for example, all these drugs, uh, all these narcotics, for example, cocaine, we refuse. And then you see him enjoying himself at a party. And then he says, uh, why, why, why you are like that? You know, you join us and so on. So slowly your inner thoughts say, yeah, it's good also. I can join them in a party and then I can take this drug and enjoy myself. I'm seeing them enjoying myself. So then these evil suggestions will slowly void, become a behavior. And at that point, then it has become a sin. As long as it is not we must understand well, from the perspective of Islam, it's not a sin. So any thought that is not manifested into an action is just a thought. So that's why it's very important in Islam that if we have waswasa, we have evil thoughts, we have bad things that's happening to us, in the thought form, we can actually overcome it. Whether it is anxiety, depression, uh, borderline personality disorder, whatever that we, we have faced, we will face all kind of this inner or they call it automatic thoughts, as Beck says, and we can overcome that. And how does we overcome that? If we take from the previous chart, the sum total of the influences of, of on inner speech, from inner speech then to action. This is where if we assume either the positive or the negative thoughts that is impinging on us and is repeated automatically over and over and over again. We have two cycles. Either it is a vicious cycle towards behavior, positive, negative, nature, inclination shapes the personality of our person. So if we take the negative side, it will have a vicious cycle of we going downward. That means if we start with uh, smoking, then becoming a drug addict, then becoming a hardcore drug addict, then end up uh, in a mental hospital, that, that is the negative cycle of life of those people who end up being a cocaine addict or opium addict or whatever addict. Then on the positive side, we have knowledge, building up knowledge, learning and our inclination towards uh, good, the good deeds, good works and so on. So we have a positive inclination. So both positive and negative nature shapes our personality, our inner speech. Inclination, influence leads to conviction. That means from these thoughts that is coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in. Uh, either we, uh, we can just ignore, because if it is evil thoughts, we don't try to just uh, be stressed out to fight it out. Because if these thoughts come in, you can just say that it is just a thought. Yes, it's just a thought. It's nothing more than that. But inshallah, with the guidance of Allah, I'm going to do this, this, this. So the arm within positive Islamic psychology and cognitive behavior, uh, Pi CBT, will give you the protocol. Uh, but this is just to give you an overview to understand that the whole idea or the whole problems that we face today is somebody has a negative thoughts and he thinks or she thinks that that thought is he or she itself. So they, they begin to get confused, they begin to get worried, they begin to have anxiety, depression and so on because they are being influenced by these automatic negative thoughts. Okay, so if we allow this evil suggestion influence us, it leads to conviction to act our personality already shaped by the three sources of input that is a physical, social and the inner speech. So all these three will have working in consonant either towards negative or positive. But if we take the other route, our physical, social and inner speech will bring us towards great success, being achievers in life, achieving peace, achieving happiness, achieving iman and so on. All right. So physical and social action based on the decision of the heart that was influenced by the previous sector. That means the spiritual, uh, physical and spiritual action based on the decision of the heart that was manifested. This is where we say the FET, FIS, our feelings, emotion and thoughts. That was manifested in the personality, life values, action of the, in, uh, of the individual. So the sum total, the total past learning history would be then many good actions, deeds, ma'ruf, happiness, fulfillment, success in this world and the hereafter, or we have a total TPLH. Bad action, 
That means mungkar, these actions initially to unhappiness, failures in life, frustration, anguish, failure in life, negative, total past learning history. We have anxiety, depression, uh, all kind of psychological uh, problems that modern, the modern human beings are facing because we are influenced by this. All right. So this is the balance, the nature of balance in life that we have to imbue ourselves with. And this is a traditional view. These two charts that I'm telling you, you can find it in our book. Before we described our model, what is the positive language psychology model. And this, this model is in this book. So it's very important for you to read in detail because uh, if I explain to you just what is written there, this is what we call diagram 9. All right. So I just read just a little paragraph. Diagram 9 gives us a greater understanding of the research done by traditional Muslim scholars over the last 1,000 years. For example, Al-Ghazali elaborated that the idea of evil suggestion or influence, Qatar Shaitani, which consists of greed of worldly material things, excessive appetite, excessive sexual desire, even prompting self, and Napsul Ammara, and suggestion, as well as excessive worry, psychological disorder, etc., which is waswasa. This evil suggestion is usually linked to our external senses of sight, hearing, smell, taste, touch, as well as excessive indulgence in this physical and material world. That means being influenced only by the physical existence. Our good inner speech that leads us to perfection, our perception and behavior usually comes from our inner source. There are many categories of these inner capabilities. For example, prophetic ins inspiration, that is wahyu, uh, our inspiration, normal inspiration from Allah, ilham, knowledge of God, al Alladuni, truth, insight, that is firasa, spiritual vision, mushahada, contemplation and reflection, that is tafakkur, tazakkur, meditation and remembrance of Allah, zikrullah, salah, prayers, dua, and so on. We are all linked to the universe and we are also influenced by the nature and the, the, nature and the spiritual existence. That means we are influenced by both the physical existence as well as spiritual existence. As Al-Ghazali elaborated how good suggestion from the universe, from Allah and the angelic dream, Katil Maliki, influence our inner speech that affects our perception and behavior. This includes receiving divine guidance, that means Taufik and Hidayah. They say, we Muslims, you must always live to get from Allah the Taufik and the Hidayah from Him. So, whatever that we do in our existence, it is from the command of Allah. So, whether good or bad, we always want to ask for the goodness. And to get this goodness and receive this goodness is what, what in Islam, the traditional values of Taufik, receiving Taufik from Allah and the Hidayah the inspiration, the, 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 the way of life that is consonant with the way that Allah has ordained because in the hands of Allah is all things good. So we ask for the good from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Tafiq Hidayah. Positive suggestion from the spiritual realm, the Skatir Ruh, that leads to divine suggestion, realizing, realizing of the truth of the nature or the truth of the existence of Allah. That is Katir Al-Yaqin or Iman Anul Yaqin. We have the three levels of Iman, Iman Ainul uh, Yaqin, you see your eyes. Iman, Ilmu Yaqin, you understand with knowledge. And Imal Hakkul Yaqin, that is embedded into our total past learning history, that we become fully aware of the nature of our existence. So, based on this level, eh, I've explained to you, Diagram 10 gives you, this is Diagram 10 in the book. It is a summary of Diagram, uh, it's the last end of the uh, Diagram 9. Alright? So, if we just describe this diagram, positive suggestion, positive or negative suggestion from a person, Malta being shapes the personality of the person. Eh? That means then the inner speech suggestion, the inner speech suggestion influences this to conviction that is iktikat, and our personality is already shaped by the three sources, as we mentioned, the physical, social, and inner speech. The physical and social action based on the decision of the heart that is influenced by the previous factor, harm, negative or positive. This leads to back action, that is munkar. This back action is lead to unhappiness, failure and frustration, anguish and failure in life. While good action and positive action or good deeds, ma'aruf, leads to happiness, fulfillment, achievement and success in this world and the hereafter. So, this is summary. Alright, so our journey in life is the journey towards perfection. Right? That means there is other diagrams that explain this detail. So, what is important is when we talk about positive Islamic cognitive behavior therapy, we bring our the fullness of the spiritual element of this understanding based on wahyu, based on the Quran, the hadith that is brought about by our Holy Prophet Muhammad, the beloved of Allah, and his 
companion and uh, his family companions sahabas uh, and the tabi'in tabi'in and all the scholars over the was one more than 1400 years so this is the core value which we can incorporate into the understanding of the nature of our being because the nature of our being then will then reflect the psychology of islam and the psychology of islam is positive the world view of islam the meta meta physical view of Islam is very, very positive because it is based on love, it is based on mercy, it is based on compassion, it is based on forgiveness. So all those qualities are mentioned and how are we going to mold our existence in this world, getting the mangfira, the forgiveness of Allah, getting the uh, ghafur, the forgiveness and the wadud, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is His attributes. So when we understand that, we can mold within our understanding of perception and then from perception to action or behavior in a way that is positive and this is the goal of positive Islamic psychology where we are presenting to you this model this is the first model in the Muslim world and we hope there are many other models huh? we are not saying that this is the only model this is a model developed by the late Professor Muhammad Madi Jenkins from his, uh, from his understanding and uh, his studies of Islam and as well as psychology because he's a great scholar in psychology and we present it and then you, you study our model see, see whether where are the areas in which you can improve and then inshallah through this continuous research we can then help the ummah because in this situation where the ummah is being influenced by terrorism influenced by suicide bombing influenced by all the negative ideologies that is very very uh, bad or evil which is not Islamic but put in the guise of Islam we are facing a terrible situation for our younger generation. So how are we going to reclaim our position as the leading ummah in the 21st century is for us to transform our nerves. And to transform our nerves, we must understand the psychology of existence. And that psychology is the psychology of Islam. And we are propounding positive Islamic psychology and the idea of positive Islamic cognitive behavior therapy that we will get into details in the subsequent videos as we go along in this talk, inshallah.